Hornby was at first a trade name for the railway productions of Meccano Limited and based in Liverpool, which released its first train, a clockwork zero gauge model, in 1920. An electric train soon followed, but was underdesigned, and the few that were made were sold in France. In 1925, a much more successful electric model was introduced, operating on 110 volts AC. Safety concerns saw low voltage 4 volts and then 6 volt motors introduced, followed by a reliable 20 volt AC system, which was developed in the early 1930s. However, clockwork remained the mainstay of the Hornby zero gauge trains until 1937 and became the only power available in Liverpool made zero gauge trains from 1949. A factory was established in France, which developed its own range of French outline trains, but Liverpool dominated export activity elsewhere, with large numbers of Hornby trains exported to Australia, New Zealand, Argentina and Scandinavia. Even though the export models were often painted in foreign liveries, Hornby trains looked very British. Hornby attempted to break into the American market by setting up a factory in 1927 in Elizabeth, New Jersey to make American style trains. These were colourful and attractive, but low market and only clockwork. They weren't particularly good compared to the US competition, but the Wall Street crash put an end to Hornby's operations in America. Meccano introduced its 00 scale trains in 1938 under the name Hornby Doublo. The locomotives were die cast metal and the carriages and wagons were generally made of tin plate. This was a well planned range of electric and clockwork models, successfully consolidating around the 12 volt DC standard. This led to the adoption of 00 as a broadly accepted modelling standard in the UK, whereas much of the rest of the world adopted HO scale. As for their O-gauge locomotives, electric Hornby Doublo locomotives ran on a third rail electric system with a track built on a pressed template base. Both Doublo and HO use the same track gauge, but their scales are different. Beginning as literally half O-gauge, the HO models of Continental prototypes at 3.5mm per foot scale were workable, but Hornby chose to slightly increase the scale to 4mm per foot for the smaller British prototypes to provide more internal space for a motor. The range expanded quickly, but was curtailed from 1940 due to World War II, production being completely suspended in 1942. Production resumed after the war, but didn't reach full capacity until 1948. Like its competitors, Hornby thrived in the first half of the 1950s, but struggled in the second half of the decade. The company was slow to recognise the threat posed by rival manufacturers, particularly trying Rovex, and to realise the potential of plastic. In 1959, far too late, Hornby introduced two rail track and moulded plastic rolling stock, but even then the system was complicated and difficult to use in comparison to its rivals. With the benefit of hindsight, the policy of keeping the faith with its existing three rail users whilst bringing the two rail system to the market was a mistake that cost the company dearly. Whilst all the newer plastic wheeled rolling stock was comparable with either system, the locomotives and track most definitely weren't, requiring the two parallel productions of practically every locomotive in the range to be offered in both formats. Meanwhile, the company persisted in producing a range of very old-fashioned zero-gauge models in 1957, completely retooling much of the range instead of taking the opportunity to discontinue it, indicative of major failings at management level. In 1964, Lines Brothers, the parent company of rival Trying Railways, purchased Meccano Limited and merged Hornby and Trying into Trying Hornby. The former Hornby line was discontinued in favour of Trying's less costly plastic designs. The Trying Group was disbanded in 1971 when owner Lines Brothers filed for bankruptcy. Parts of Trying, including Hornby, were sold to Dundee Convex Marks, becoming Hornby Railways in 1972. By 1976, Hornby was facing challenges from Palatoy and Airfix, both of which were making high quality detailed models. Detail on the models was upgraded to make the product line more attractive to adult hobbyists. A 16-channel command control system named Zero One was introduced in late 1979. Zero One was based on digital, not analogue technology, and as such was the forerunner to the NMRA digital command control system which appeared in the 1990s. 
Adverts claim that 16 locomotives could be operated independently at the same time. Though an important milestone, 01 wasn't wildly successful. The controller units and decoder modules required for the locomotives were expensive, but with clean track and well-serviced rolling stock, the system worked well. Locomotives equipped with a 01 decoder couldn't be used on conventional direct current systems, making it difficult to run your locomotives on friends or clubs layouts. The master control unit was discontinued in 1985. The slave controller, loco modules and accessory modules were still available until the late 1980s. The system is still used today by many modelers, highlighted by the demand on such sites like eBay for the items in the second-hand market. Despite being on the market for a short time, Zero One had the largest install base among command control systems in the early 1980s in North America. As part of the 1980 Rocket 150 celebrations celebrating the 150th anniversary of Stevenson's rocket, Hornby released a live steam powered 3.5 inch gauge locomotive. A major goal was to make real live steam accessible to an indoor domestic environment. The boiler was considerably smaller than the external diameter, surrounded by a thick insulating jacket to prevent burns. It was fueled by butane gas from cigarette lighter refills. To provide more torque from the small cylinders, gearing was adeptly hidden between the cranks and the wheels. The track was of asymmetric moulded plastic units, representing the fish belly rails of the period. These could be assembled either way round, to give either curved or straight track. By 1980 the market was extremely tough, and Dumby Crombex Marks was liquidated, placing Hornby into receivership. Hornby became Hornby Hobbies, and in 1981 a management buyout saw the company back on a sound footing. It went public in 1986. By the early 1990s, Hornby again faced competition from newcomers such as Daypol and established foreign manufacturers including Lima and Barkman Industries. To reduce costs, manufacturing was moved to Guangdong Province in China in 1995. As part of the process, Hornby also bought in some of Daypol's products and some of the old Airfix molds, which were by then owned by Daypol. Train sets based on Thomas the Tank Engine and Friends and Harry Potter have been particularly profitable ventures. In September 2003, Hornby released its first steam-powered double-zero gauge locomotive, a model of the record-breaking Mallard. Several other live steam locomotives have now been produced. Since then, Hornby has bought Lima, an Italian model railway equipment manufacturer that had previously acquired Jueff, a French manufacturer. Some of the ex-Lima models appear in the main Hornby products list, which is known as Hornby International. This acquisition also included the Riva Rossi line of HO scale products, also originally from Italy, and the Arnold brand of N scale products. They also took over the Spanish model railway company Electrotren, which is the Spanish importer of Scalextric, sold as Superslot. In November 2006, Hornby Hobbies acquired Airfix and Humbrol paints for the sum of £2.6 million. Airfix fans were concerned that it would be the end of the brand, but just as the name Hornby was once a trademark of Meccano, Airfix is now a successful trade name of Hornby. In 2008, Hornby announced the acquisition of Corgi Classics Limited, one of the world's oldest makers of collectible die-cast models of trucks, buses, cars and aeroplanes. From 2015, Hornby PLC began to announce a series of declining financial results. Hornby was selling to existing customers, but new younger customers weren't attracted to model trains. After shares dropped by more than 50% in a year, and the 2016 results, Hornby declared that it planned to cut more than half the toys it made, after discovering that it generated 90% of its profits from only 50% of its range. Finances continued to suffer, and this culminated in July 2017, when the largest shareholder, Phoenix Asset Management, agreed to take a controlling interest in the company. Hornby's financial situation continues to look shaky, but the company's train sets have delighted kids and big kids for decades, and many hope it will for years to come. A big thank you to all my patrons for supporting me. To get early advert free access to new videos or to appear in the credits, please consider supporting me using the Patreon link below from just $1 or 80p a month and hit that subscribe button to get notified of new videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.